Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray, amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. This morning I'll be reading from Exodus chapter 20, verse 21, and then I'll read from John chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. Exodus 20, verse 21 says, Then the people stood at a distance while Moses drew near to the thick darkness where God was. And then John chapter 20, starting at verse 1, Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter, the other disciple, set out and went to, toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in. And saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But I go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my father and to your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Pray with me. Lord, breathe your strength on us this day that we may brush up close and experience your presence. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Heard a story about a fellow who went to Walmart one day, went to go buy some dog food, and he didn't realize it until he got all the way back to the dog food aisle that he had forgotten a cart. And so he just grabbed a 50-pound bag of dog food and slung it onto his shoulder. He walked the dog food up to the counter. He was waiting in line. And that's when the fellow behind him said, Oh, so do you have a dog? That's not the punchline. <laughs> the fellow thought he'd have a little bit of fun. He said, 
No, I don't have a dog. I'm on that new Purina diet. I don't know if you've heard about it. I lost 45 pounds on the diet a little while back, but then went into the hospital. I gained some of the weight back, so now I'm starting on it again. The fellow said, wow, you lost 45 pounds. How does it work? He said, well, I just take a couple of handfuls of this Purina dog food. I stick them in my pockets all day long. I just pop in a little kibble, and it's got all the the nutrients that you need and I'm not hungry the whole day. The fellow said, well, how does it taste? He said, well, the soft ones are really pretty good. He said, the hard ones are kind of tough on your teeth, but you get used to it after a while. And he said, wow, you lost 45 pounds. That's great. But you said you went into the hospital. What happened? He said, oh, it didn't have anything to do with the diet. I was out barking and chasing cars and got hit by one. <laughs> it doesn't quite go where you think it's going to go, does it? Catches you by surprise. <laughs> that's, that's the purpose. That's the purpose of a whole lot of stories, to catch you off guard, catch you by surprise. One of the things from the beginning to the end of the Bible is God's always catching folks off guard. That he doesn't show up where they expect him. That sometimes they set the table and God doesn't show up at all. Other times where they're not prepared, that that's where God is. The first verse that I read, it's Moses. He's receiving the Ten Commandments from God. And something that, I don't know, if it really hit me like this before, it says that Moses drew near to the thick darkness where God was. I don't know that I really expected that God would be in the thick darkness, but, but that, there it is. And I begin to think about that, that Mary, Mary, it was while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene saw Jesus, the, the risen Christ there at the tomb while it was still dark in the thick darkness that's not what we expect at all but sure enough it's that place that we don't always expect that God shows up and this morning what I want to talk about that that even in the darkness even in the darkness that's where God is and the first thing that I want to talk about is look for him look for him even in the darkness. Pastor Leith Anderson tells a story about when he was a boy, that he grew up outside of New York City, that he was a big baseball fan, but especially a Brooklyn Dodgers fan. And as a, a young boy, his father took him to the World Series to watch the Brooklyn Dodgers play the, the New York Yankees. He was pulling for the Dodgers the whole time, but he was disappointed at the end of the game, the, the, the Dodgers lost and nobody even reached first base. The, the Yankees pitcher had, had been so dominant, not, not one batter reached first base. He said it wasn't until many years later that he was talking to a, a fellow that was what he referred to as a, a walking sports almanac that he was talking about as a boy, that he actually went to World Series game and watched the, the Brooklyn Dodgers play the, the New York Yankees, but he was disappointed that nobody even reached first base. That's when the, the other fellow said, you were at that game? Leith Anderson said, well, yeah. He said, that's the only World Series that's ever ever been pitched a, a perfect game no one re reached first base there were not only no runs there were no hits there was no one even made it to first base and there were no errors in over a hundred years of baseball that's the only perfect game in a world series Don Larson pitched that game and you were at that game and that's when Pastor Leith Anderson says this he said, I wonder how often the same thing happens to us. We get so caught up in defeats in our lives. The times things don't turn out the way they, we want them to. But we're often so blinded by the pain and disappointment of our defeat that we fail to appreciate 
the fact that we might be witness to something far greater that God is doing in our lives. Mary went to the tomb. And when she saw the stone had been rolled away, she ran to, to tell Peter and the other disciples. John and Peter ran to the tomb. Well, they saw, and then they ran back home. It was Mary who stayed. And verse 10, verse 10, excuse me, verse 11 says this, And she bent over to look into the tomb again. that she wasn't blinded by her disappointment. This morning, it's obvious. We've been living in some hard times. We've been living in some difficult times. And I just want to say, don't let sorrow steal your sight. Heaven and earth are full of God's glory. And if you look for it, you can see it. Why, it was just last week, just last week during our Alter Your Life, over 30 young people made a commitment to Christ for the first time, and over 50 young people reaffirmed their faith. This is no small thing at all. Don't let sorrow steal your sight. Don't let star sorrow steal your sight. Look for him. Look for him, even in the darkness. Second thing that I wanted to say this morning is listen for him. Listen for him, even in the darkness. Chuck Swindoll, in his book Stress Fact Fractures, tells a, about a time in his life when he had too many commitments in too few days. He said he was at that point where he found himself snapping at his wife and at his children. He was irritated by anything that was an inconvenience or an interruption. That he found himself eating faster and faster at meals so he could get on to the next thing. And that it was hurry, hurry, hurry. He said that it wasn't until his little girl, Colleen, said, Daddy, I want to tell you about something that happened at school today. And I want to tell you something, and I'll tell you really fast. And that's when Chuck Swindoll said, Honey, you don't have to tell me really fast. You can tell me slowly. And that's when Colleen told him something that he'd never forget. He said, If I tell you sw slowly, can you listen slowly? If I tell you slowly, can you listen slowly? And that's how listening happens. It happens slowly, and most often, God speaks to those who take time to listen. We read that Peter and the other disciple, John, ran to the tomb. And then they also went home. They didn't hear the voice of Jesus. They were running there and running back. They were busy to get behind the, the closed doors. For fear is what the Bible tells us. That hurry isn't just of the devil. Hurry is the devil. And I'm not just talking about going from one thing to the next. I'm talking about minds. Our minds that rush, that rush from one fear to the next fear from one news story to the next news story, from one worry to the next worry. The way that God said it is, be still and know that I'm God in Psalm 46.10. That God speaks to those who take time to listen. Mary took time to linger, to linger and listen. And it was Mary was the first to hear the voice of the risen Christ. Mary was the first to see the risen Christ. Even in the darkness. Even in the darkness. Look for him even in the darkness. Listen for him even in the darkness. And don't let hurry steal your, he healing, your hearing. 
Don't let hurry steal your hearing. And the last thing that I wanted to talk about this morning is call on him. Call on him. Even in the darkness, call on him. We read this morning, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb. While it was still dark, she came to the tomb. Mary Magdalene knew what Jesus had done for her. He had cast out seven demons from Mary Magdalene. He had cast out her fear. Jesus had cast out her sin, her shame. Jesus had cast out all the darkness in her life. Mary Magdalene knew the power of Jesus Christ in her life. And it's there on the cross that Jesus took for you and for me. He took that heartache. He took that fear. He took that sin. He took that shame. He took the darkness. He took all the demons that would destroy us. And that's what he did for, for you and for me on the cross. 1 Peter 3.18 says, Christ died for sins once for all. The just for the unjust in order that he might bring us to God. That on the cross, Jesus took everything that would destroy us, everything that would conquer us, and he nailed it to the cross to take away its power once and for all. And when Jesus rose from the grave for you and for me, it was so he could live his life through us. And we could call, we could call on Jesus. We could call on his power. We could call on his strength. When I was in seminary, one of my favorite professors was George Morris. He would tell us stories about being raised in a poor southern Appalachian community. And he told us that his grandfather had been an atheist. So there wasn't a lot of spiritual talk around the family. And that he was surprised, totally caught off guard when he was 17 years old that his his father became friends with Methodist minister in town. He said that he was even more surprised when at a revival, his father knelt at the altar and gave his life to Jesus. Well, if he was surprised by that, he said that he was, he was shocked when his father rose from the altar and came directly to him. He turned to him and said, son, I know this is embarrassing for you. He said, but I want you to hear me out if you can. And trust me. I found something here this evening that I've been searching for for over 56 years. His father went on to say, and I would rather die than see you make the mistake that I have. That night... George Morris also received Jesus as his Savior. He called on him. In the middle of the surprise, in, in, in the midst of the unexpected, he called on him. You and I are in a time right now where heartache and fear are prevalent. And so often it is that, that in that darkness we call out to the heartache, we call out to the fear, we rehearse it one more time. That you and I, we live lives where sin, shame, they call to us to practice, to rehearse them, to go over them again and again. We call for the darkness, the worries of the world to practice, to rehearse, to relive, and to remember. And those worries of the world, those worries of the world, they, they steal our voice. They would call out to Jesus and Jesus alone. Now is the time to get back to Jesus. Now is the time to, to call out to Jesus and, and to Jesus alone. 
Don't let sorrow steal your sight. Call out to Jesus and Jesus alone. Don't let hurry steal your hearing. Call out to Jesus and to Jesus alone. Don't let the worries of the world steal your voice. Call out to Jesus and Jesus alone. Even in the darkness, even in the darkness, you can call out to Jesus, as Savior, as friend, and you can trust. Rely on, lean on Him, starting this day. I want to invite you to pray with me now. Let's pray. Jesus, we live in a world that screams, be afraid. We live in a world that calls us to, to rehearse the last time we, we blew it. We live in a time that calls us to remember our shame. We call, live in a time that asks that we rehearse calling out to the darkness and not to you. Lord, may we never let the worries of the world steal our voice. But this day, call out to you, Jesus. To call out to Jesus and Jesus alone. You rose that your strength might live in us and through us. May we call out to you and call out to you alone. Lord, we live in a time that's hard. A time that, that we remember our sorrow. But may our sorrow not steal our sight. That heaven and earth are full of your glory. And may we call out to you and to you alone give praise to recognize your presence lord we live in a world that calls our minds to from from one news headline to the next from one fear to the next from one worry to the next and we live lives of of hurry 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 and we lose, we lose when we don't linger and listen. We lose when we don't be still and listen to you. Lord, you have just the power we need to come back to you, to call out to you, and to not let the hurry steal our hearing. This day, Breathe on us that we may know your strength and your power and call out to Jesus, Jesus alone. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. My name is Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Thank you for joining us this morning. We're a church that's a place of community and faith and we're a welcoming church. I hope that you experience that online, but not only online, my hope is that you experience it through our Facebook page. But not only that, 
Once we meet together in person, we're at 814 Mimosa Boulevard, and I hope you'll come and experience it in person. We're a welcoming church. We're a biblical church, and we're a compassionate church. It's a place of community and faith where we help people live a Christ-centered life. And my hope is that you'll come and be a part of it. Thank you for joining us.